You know, it's a good thing, but some animals clearly let you know they're no joke. Sharks with rows and rows of razor-sharp teeth, a scorpion's venomous stinger, the ominous sound of a rattlesnake about to strike. Eh, you get the picture. Yet plenty of seemingly harmless creatures wreak more havoc than even the scariest animals out there. Like the spotted lanternfly, a pretty little bug from parts of Taiwan, Vietnam, and northern China that managed to bring its own terror around the world. Yikes! Let me explain. Only about as big as the tip of your thumb, this bug is easily identifiable. It has gray or brownish forewings with black spots. Under those, you have bright red hind wings that make this critter a real beauty. But don't be fooled. This insect can be an ecosystem's worst nightmare. And it's on the move, traveling to Korea, Japan, and even across the ocean to Middle America. Along the way, it's damaged countless plant species. In the US, it's been infesting maple and birch trees. So what's the big deal? The lanternfly pierces the tissue of leaves and stems. Then it slurps out the sap. This leaves a sugary coat on the leaves that allows mold to thrive. The plant or tree can't grow after that, and it eventually wilts. This can then impact food production, trees, and developing forests. Now, don't worry too much. This bug doesn't bite or sting people. But the plant loss they cause is enough to get the highest authorities involved in the case. Stepping off the land and diving into the ocean, we see a creature whose body is covered with venomous spines. Meet the crowd of thorns starfish. It spends its days crawling around and feeding on coral. That's usually great for the local ecosystem. They eat the super-fast-growing corals, giving the slower species a chance to catch up in the race. But when the starfish grows too large in numbers, the real problems start. They can quickly eat up vast parts of the coral reef system. This starfish is even partly to blame for the huge losses in Australia's Great Barrier Reef. A 2012 study showed that they were one of two leading causes of coral loss in the last 27 years – them and tropical cyclones. Even worse, their spines produce a neurotoxin that causes a sharp stinging pain that lasts for hours. If you happen to touch or step on one of these starfish, the spines can break off into your skin. Next comes possible infection and a series of other problems. So stay away from this one. Next up, we have the common carp. You might know the colorful version of this fish, the koi. Those were specially bred to look more vivid. Carps are freshwater bottom feeders. They eat plants, animals, algae, and other microorganisms living in the mud in rivers and lakes. The problem is, their feeding lowers the water quality. Carp uproot the plants they munch on and make the water cloudy. That doesn't allow enough light to get through, so some species struggle. They also produce large amounts of nitrogen. This makes the water uninhabitable for other fish. And that's why many people consider them pests. Unbelievably, the elephant is also on this list of nature's terrors. To find food and water, these giants roam across vast territories. Along the way, they break branches, pull up bushes, and push over entire trees. If they uproot a few here and there, it's usually easy for forests to recover from the damage. But the situation got bad enough at one point for scientists to be concerned. Trees throughout East Africa were severely damaged by passing elephants. Keep in mind, the gentle giants weren't entirely at fault. At the time, there were many fires pushing the elephants on the move. And it isn't all bad either. After elephants munch on their fruits and veggies, they transport the seeds miles away. Ooh, how do they do that? Oh yeah, elephant doo-doo. Then new trees start to grow. And when there's no available water, they dig deep holes in the ground with their feet, trunks, and tusks. That also helps other thirsty animals in the area. Other ecosystem wreckers are kangaroos. Australia has been struggling with the animal's overpopulation recently. A decade of wet weather brought a lot of food and abundant marsupials. They went from 27 million in 2010 to 45 million in 6 years. Kangaroos started wiping out native plants, and many animals were left without food and habitat. By stripping the grasses anchoring down the ground, they cause erosion in areas that struggle to preserve the soil. Locusts form enormous swarms and spread across areas, destroying crops in their path. 
This leads to a shortage of food, and some species can't survive. The most notorious are the desert locusts that live in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. In quiet times, they cover an area of 6 million square miles. That's almost twice the size of Canada. But during a spike in their numbers, they can cover one-fifth of the Earth's land. A regular swarm that blackens the skies can be 460 miles in size. It contains 60 million locusts every half a mile. Each locust eats its weight in plants every day. A swarm the size of Paris can eat the same amount of food in a day as half of France's population. Goats are nothing to scoff at either. They're voracious eaters with an appetite for shrubs, trees, and all sorts of plants. They can turn rich, dense woodlands into barren grasslands when left to do as they please. The problem became more noticeable in Australia and other isolated islands, where people tried to start a settlement. They dig into the Earth's crust with their hooves – the goats, not the people. When the weather's bad, winds will transport the loose soil and erosion begins. Another cute yet invasive species is the cane toad. They became successful invaders in Oceania, the Caribbean, the US, and a few other places. In fact, they were first introduced to eradicate other pests, but ended up becoming pests themselves. Cane toads are toxic, and scientists link them with the extinction of several species in northern Queensland. They're dangerous to wildlife, since their poison glands can take out birds, mammals, fish, and reptiles. They'll compete for food, and they'll eat anything they can swallow – kitchen scraps, your pet's food, and even other animals. Some species will multiply in rotting wood, but the mountain pine beetle will exterminate live trees. The insects invaded the Canadian Rockies, and millions of acres have been affected. They strike live trees by laying eggs under the bark. That disrupts the phloem, basically a plant's vascular system, like veins in humans, and stops the circulation. Eventually, the trees turn brown and rot. It takes them two weeks to wipe out the outer layer of a tree. They're pretty robust, too, since they're a resistor to temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Once they infest a tree, it's a goner. Jellyfish have been part of the global ecosystem for 500 million years. But now it seems like they're taking over the seas, maybe even the world. Recent strong winds and hot weather spells have pushed large numbers of blue-bottle jellyfish near the shores. There, hordes of them have been stinging large numbers of people. In 2018, more than 1,000 people were stung in Florida. In 2019, 13,000 cases were recorded in Queensland, Australia in just one week. It doesn't end there. In 2011, two reactors had to be shut down in Scotland because jellyfish started blocking the cooling filters. Something similar happened in Sweden in 2013, with a power plant being shut down. In 1999, an island in the Philippines had a complete blackout because of jellyfish. Too many jellies can trigger a deterioration in the ecosystem. But even though they multiply like crazy, the numbers aren't alarming, at least not yet. One of the world's most invasive species, but probably not for the reasons you're thinking, are rats. They're expert survivors, and that makes them dangerous when they're introduced to new areas. Like the time black rats invaded Lord Howe Island in the Tasman Sea. They destroyed crops, gobbled up the fruits and seeds of many local plants, and prevented them from reproducing. They also took bird eggs from nests and ate anything in their path. Experts believe that mice first appeared in the area in 1850. Rats showed up in 1918 when they escaped from a sinking ship. In a century, they played a massive role in the extinction of five local bird species, 13 invertebrates, and two plants. It got to the point that a zoo took in flocks of two other endangered bird species to help them survive. There were 150,000 rats and 200,000 mice on the island. But a nearly extinct bird species successfully went back home after eradication. And lastly, there's humans. Come on, need I explain? <laughs>